أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما نافعا اللهم أرنا الحق حقا وارزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا وارزقنا اجتنابه Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the Reflections on the Risale-i Nur by Bedi Uzzaman Said Nursi podcast series. You can follow this series uh, from wherever you subscribe to your podcasts or from the website www.reflections-rn.org. Alhamdulillah, we have read through the first f- four words as well as the second station of the 14th flash in the, wor- uh, in the book, The Words. Today, we will continue with the fifth word. Bismillah. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Inna Allah ma'al ladhina taqaw wal ladhina hum muhsinun. In the name of God the merciful, the giver of mercy. Surely God is with those who keep from disobedience to him out of reverence for him. The word that we are translating here is taqwa, piety, or this is a good interpretation of the word. Those who keep from disobedience to him out of reverence for him and who are devoted to doing good. Muhsinun who are devoted to doing good and doing good in the most perfect way possible, who do ihsan, who beautify, who perfect what they do. Namaz kılmak ve büyük günahları işlememek ne derece hakiki bir vazife-i insaniye ve ne kadar fıtri münasip bir neticeyi hılkati beşeri olduğunu görmek istersen şu temsili hikayeciye bak Dinle. If you want to understand how performing the prescribed prayers and keeping away from major sins are quintessential duties for humans and natural and befitting results of their very creation, then listen to this parable. In the fourth word, we focus on the prescribed prescribed prayers and also the concept of Arbodiyya. Um, and we focused on this concept in our earlier uh, recordings, in our or- earlier uh, episodes too. Arbodiyya, being a servant, being a slave of God, slavehood, the state that a slave assumes before his um, master, Arbodiyya, right? And here we have a very concise definition of our body, yeah. Performing the prescribed prayers, and we can add to these other forms of worship, and keeping away from major sins. That is, performing, fulfilling what is ordained by God, and avoiding what is forbidden by Him. Now, the concept of Big sins, kebair, uh, has its foundation in the Quran and the prophetic traditions. In the Quran, God encourages humans to stay away from major sins. And for this one can look at the 31st verse of the uh, chapter An-Nisa, the 4th chapter of the Quran, or the 53rd chapter of the Quran, Surah An-Najm, the 32nd verse. In addition to the Quranic encouragement to avoid major sins, big sins or major sins, there are many narrations from the Prophet uh, that list various acts as major sins. This indicates that major sins are not necessarily limited to a particular list. So this is important because sometimes you are going to find out there lists of like seven 
major sins. And it is important to avoid those, but that is not a complete list of what we need to avoid. Uh, one of the prophetic traditions, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, mentions seven major sins, and that's why that has become you know, famous. But otherwise, the major sins are various, and the, the severity of a sin may also depend on the circumstances in which it is committed. Some of the major sins mentioned in the traditions of the Prophet wasallam, are as follows. Associating partners with God, shirk. Insistence on sinning. And this is important because a small sin when a person insists on committing it, would become a major sin. Because that is ultimately done in defiance of God, and defying God is a major sin. Seizing hope from God's mercy, feeling safe from God's punishment, giving false testimony, slandering chaste women, swearing to obtain unrightful property, sorcery, consuming intoxicants, engaging in usury, consuming the property of orphans, stealing, killing, adultery, sodomy, escaping from battle at time of war, and disrespecting one's parents. These are all mentioned in various hadiths, in various traditions of the Prophet wasallam, as major sins. So, the concept is not limited. What we should take out of this is that the concept is not limited to a small and particular list. Rather, it is a warning. It is about, it is related to the Arbodiyya. It is related to the position, the state that a slave takes before his Lord, before his master. It is a call for mindfulness of God and then all of these depending on the circumstances are major sins at varying degrees so after this tangent and explanation about the concept of major sins kabair let's go to the beginning and reread uh, the, the the first sentence so that we can move on if you want to understand how performing the prescribed prayers and keeping away from major sins are quintessential duties for humans. Quintessential. This is important to recognize here. It is not accidental, and I'm using the word accidental in, in, in the sense that it is usually used in philosophy. It is not um attached to human nature nature after the fact it does not come after the fact it is not a secondary thing it is quintessential it is primary it is fundamental performing the five daily prayers and avoiding major sins are quintessential duties for humans one who does not do them one who does not perform the five daily prayers loses his deen because as we mentioned in our previous uh, episode, as-salatu imadu din prayer is the <coughs> central pole of religion, like the, like a tent that is that is held up with a central pole. When you take that pole away, the whole thing collapses. And performing prescribed prayers therefore is what holds a person's religion up and keeping away major away from major sins is heeding god's command one who does not heed his master's command is in a state of disobedience we do not want to be there we do not want to be disobedient rebellious slaves we want to be obedient slaves and we want to obey willingly with eagerness enthusiasm seeking the pleasure in obedience 
This is not, we are not talking about coercion here. We are not talking about chattel slavery. No, we are talking about a slave who has no way of not being a slave. And his being a slave also means that he is under the protection and care of his master. And his master is merciful. Being a slave means seeking refuge in the mercy of God. And the fitting results of their very creation. God says in the Quran that He created humans and the jinn. For what? Illa li abudun. For nothing but so that they would worship Him. And we talked about this before. Here, worship is understood as to know because one cannot worship one that he does not know. To worship God, we first need to know Him. And if we knew Him the way He deserves to be known, we would not but worship Him. So if you want to understand this, if you want to understand how performing the prescribed prayers and keeping away from major sins are quintessential duties for humans and natural and befitting results of their very creation, then listen to this parable that is coming. This is the intention that we need to have as we listen to the parable and the following explanation of the reality that is brought closer to our minds with the our intellect with the parable. Seferberlikte bir taburda biri muallem vazife perver, diğeri acemi nefis perver, iki asker beraber bulunuyordu. Once there were two soldiers in an army unit during a time of military mobilization. As we mentioned before, in the first eight treatises, in the first eight words, uh, Ustad Nursi is using parables of a military nature because he says he is addressing one of his students who is uh, a mil military person personnel, who is a soldier. Once there were two soldiers in an army unit during a time of military mobilization. So. It is important to recognize this here that this is not an ordinary time. This is a time of military mobilization. And the two soldiers are already conscripted. They are not civilians. They are soldiers. They are in the army. They are conscripted and they are in the army. And there are two of them. Because, as we should have recognized by this time, in, the, in these parables, it is always about the choice that we do, we make. And the choice we make is either good or bad. And that is the nature of our existence here on this earth. We are sent down here for trial to see how we make our choices. And the two soldiers represent the two choices, sometimes more than two that we do we make between good and bad, good and evil. Vazife perver nefer talime ve cihada dikkat eder, erzak ve tayinatını hiç düşünmezdi. One of them, one of these soldiers, was well trained and dedicated to his duty, while the other was a self-centered raw recruit. One of them was well trained and importantly dedicated to, the, to his duty. The other one was self-centered. He thought about his self all the time. He loved his self. His focus was on his self and on his self alone. Vazife perver nefer talime ve cihada dikkat eder, erzak ve tayinatını hiç düşünmezdi. The dedicated soldier concentrated on his drills and the war. Because this is wartime. This is wartime and his, his duty is to focus on the war and to train himself, to improve himself so that he can be of service. He did not worry about his provisions or rations. Çünkü anlamış ki onu beslemek ve cihazatını vermek, hasta olsa tedavi etmek, hatta indel hace lokmayı ağzına koymaya kadar 
devletin vazifesidir. He did not worry about his provisions or rations because he knew that it was the duty of the state to feed him and to provide his equipment, to treat him at time of sickness and even to put the food on in his mouth if needed. In the military, in a modern army, let's say, the soldiers are not charged by procuring food, cultivating the land, picking potatoes. The state provides that. The government provides that. The job, the duty of the soldiers is to, to focus on their drills and to focus on the effort that they need to exert for the country to be saved. Now, sometimes they may be working in the kitchen and so on and so forth. We will come to that. They do it as part of their job, as part of their duty as a soldier. Not individually, not on their own, in order to procure their needs on a continual basis without the government's intervention. Because he knew this dedicated soldier knew that it was the duty of the state to feed him and provide his equipment. To treat him at time of sickness and even to put the food in his mouth if needed. Ve onun asıl vazifesi talim ve cihattır. His real, quintessential, actual duty is what? To focus on the drill and the war effort. Fakat bazı erzak ve cihazat işlerinde işler kazan kaynatır, karavana yıkar, getirir. Ona sorulsa ne yapıyorsun? Devletin angaryasını çekiyorum der. Demiyor, nafakam için çalışıyorum. Yet, he attended to the preparation of some provisions and rations. He cooked, he washed the trays and carried them and so on. When asked what he was doing, and this is important, he replied... I am doing my duty to this state. He did not say, I am working to procure my needs. That is guaranteed. The, pro the, the provision is guaranteed by the state. Therefore, he does not need to work on it. Work for it. Diğer şiken perver ve acemi nefer ise talime ve harbe dikkat etmezdi. By contrast, the other, indulgent and untrained soldier, paid no attention to his drills and the war. O devlet işidir, bana ne? derdi. He said, that is an affair of the state. Why do I care? Daim nafakasını düşünüp onun peşinde dolaşır, taburu terk eder, çarşıya gider, alışveriş ederdi. With a constant concern over the provision of his sustenance, he left the battalion and went to the marketplace to buy and sell. Bir gün muallem arkadaşı ona dedi. Birader, asıl vazifen talim ve muharebedir. Sen onun için buraya getirilmişsin. Padişaha itimad et, o seni aç bırakmaz. O onun vazifesidir. One day, his well-trained comrade told him, Brother, and this is also... An important in there is also an important indication here. Some of us on this earth, humans, are believers. We are blessed with the blessing of bounty or gift of faith. And some are not believers. They were not born in a Muslim society, or they were born in a Muslim society, but they were they were overcome by the, their desires by their compulsive souls, by the shaitan, Satan, and so on and so forth. The attitude of the believer to the non-believer is this. Brother, we are all sons and daughters of Adam and Eve, Adam and Hawa. And we are all brothers. Our attitude is, should be characterized by mercy. And 
and an effort to help them find the true path, find the straight path. One day, the well-trained comrade told this in a self-indulgent, untrained role recruit, Brother, your true responsibilities are training and fighting the war. That is why you have been brought here. Trust the king. And this is about a recognition of who the king is, what he has guaranteed, what he is capable of, whether he keeps his promise, the provision is guaranteed. He will not let you go hungry, for he has taken that responsibility on himself. He has taken that responsibility on himself. Hem sen aciz ve fakirsin. Her yerde kendini beslettiremezsin. Hem mücahede ve seferberlik zamanıdır. Hem sana asidir der ceza verirler. Besides, you are powerless in a state of power, poverty. Aciz ve en, en fakr. You are impotent and you are in a state of neediness. You cannot feed yourself everywhere. You cannot go anywhere and assume that you are going to be fed. You cannot have yourself fed everywhere. Moreover, this is a time of mobilization and war. This is a time of urgency. There are certain rules that apply. We cannot just go around as if we are here for a picnic. They will consider you a rebel and punish you. So what you are doing, one or first does not achieve you what you are pursuing by doing it. You are pursuing your provision, although it is guaranteed, and you will not be able to acquire it freely. You are powerless. You have too many needs. You cannot have all of them taken care of on your own. And the king has guaranteed to take care of them. But by doing this, you are in a sense offending the king. He says, I'm going to take care of it. You don't believe that. And you go away. You go away from where your duty is and pursue your needs. You will be treated as a rebel. You will be punished at the end of this. Brother, please come to your senses. Evet, iki vazife peşimizde görünüyor. Yes, there are two responsibilities before us. So there are two responsibilities that we can see in this situation. Biri padişahın vazifesidir. Bazen biz onun angaryasını çekeriz. Ki bizi beslemektir. One belongs to the king. One of these responsibilities belongs to the king. He assumed it. He guaranteed it. He said, this is my responsibility. But sometimes we do fatigue duty for him. This is the provision of our sustenance. This duty is the provision of our sustenance. It is the king's responsibility, but sometimes we do fatigue duty for him because we are under his command. When we do that, we do it in order to fulfill his command, not to procure the needs independent of him. Diğeri bizim vazifemizdir. Padişah bize teslihat ile yardım eder ki talim ve harptir. The other, the other responsibility belongs to us and the king helps us by giving arms this is training and fighting the war so here too we are not completely independent or we are not independent we need in order to fulfill this duty of training and the war we need what arms equipment and also the provision and the king helps us by providing those Acaba o serseri nefer, o mücahid muallime kulak vermezse ne kadar tehlikede kalır anlarsın. You will understand 
the danger awaiting that unruly soldier if he does not heed the warning of his well-trained comrade. We as onlookers understand the situation because we can see the full picture, the big picture. And this well-trained comrade also sees what's going on. And he is telling the raw recruit, look, come to your senses, fix your ways, amend your ways. What you are doing is not going to get you anywhere good. You will be punished for this and you will not achieve what you need. And we see the big picture and we, we understand that this raw recruit recruit should follow his comrade's advice. If he does not, he is in big trouble. In a big danger is awaiting him. Now we are back. Again, we are back to the reality date that is being represented by this parable. And Ustad Nursi, as he moves on to the reality, addresses, Oh, my lazy soul. And we should all address our souls because our souls are lazy. We should all say, Oh, my lazy soul. O dalgalı meydanı harip, bu dağdağlı dünya hayatıdır. That turbulent war front is the tumultuous life of this world. Now, we are talking about this world. And this world is like a war front. There is a struggle going on. And we are not talking about a struggle in the sense that you know, Darwinism has introduced to us. Life is a struggle, you know, everything against everything. No. We know, we talked about this before, that in this world, everything helps everything. But the struggle is with what? The struggle is with our compulsive souls, with the shaitan, with Satan, and with the um, distractions of the dunya, distractions of the world. The struggle is to stay focused and to fulfill our responsibilities before our Lord, to perform the five daily prayers, to fast, to go on Hajj if we have the health and means, to pay the obligatory alms, of course to believe and then to avoid backbiting, to, to make an effort to be an upright believer, to make an effort to go before our our Lord with a, an account book that is full of good deeds. That is the struggle. This That turbulent war front is the tumultuous life of this world. That's the struggle. And the world is a perfect place for the trial that we are going through. It is full of troubles and tribulations and we know that they are all trials they are all opportunities for us to improve ourselves to check where we stand before our lord and to demonstrate that inshallah we are deserving of his pleasure o taburlara taksim edilen ordu ise cemiyeti ve şeriyedir that army divided into various units battalions is the human society Ve o tabur ise şu asrın cemaati İslamiyesidir. And that particular army unit, army battalion is the Muslim community of our time. O iki, o iki nefer ise biri feraiz dinyesini bilen ve işleyen, kebairi terk ve günahları işlememek için nefis ve şeytanla mücahede eden muttaki Müslümandır. As for those two soldiers, one is a God-fearing Muslim, muttaki pious Muslim, taqwa, that's the word again that we are uh, using here. One is a muttaqi Muslim, one is a Muslim with taqwa, who knows the obligatory requirements of his religion and fulfills them while staying away from major sins and struggling, struggling with his compulsive soul and the Satan to avoid any transgression of God's boundaries. That's where we want to be. That's what we want to do. Diğeri, 
rezzak-ı hakiki ittiham etmek derecesinde derdi maişete dalıp feraizi terk ve maişet yolunda rast gelen günahları işleyen fasıkı hasirdir. The other is a sinful loser. A sinful loser. His sin. His sin does not acquire him anything. He does not benefit anything with his sin. He is a sinful loser who is so preoccupied with the necessities of sustenance. Sustenance. Even to the extent of casting as Persians on the true provider, Razak Hakiki, that he leaves the obligatory requirements of religion and commits every sin that come in his way as he struggles to earn his living. I'm going to have a business transaction. If I tell the truth, I'm going to earn 500. If I don't tell the truth, say what I am selling has a defect. If I hide the defect, I can sell it for 650. I am going to hide the defect. I am going to make 650. Okay, but what about the Lord who told us to expose the defects of what we sell in a transaction like this? To be truthful. What about the Lord who commanded us to be truthful? What happens if we forget him? And if we rely on our transaction for our provision and not on him, did we not forget that he is the real provider? He is the true provider, Rezaq Hakiki. Are we casting as Persians on his ability or promise to provide? That's very dangerous. That is very dangerous. Ve o talim ve talimat ise Başta namaz ibadettir. As for that war, that is struggling against one one's evil commanding compulsive soul, selfish desires, and the satans among humans and the jinn, in order to save one's heart and soul from sins and base morals that lead to external destruction. This is jihad. This is Jihad. Yes, jihad includes war the way we conventionally understand war because for a person to be able to fight the war in a conventional war when there are bullets you know, going around, one first has to overcome his compulsive soul. One first has to overcome his love for himself so that he can put his life in the way of danger. But that is one aspect of the concept of jihad, the struggle. As for that war, that is struggling against one's evil commanding soul. It is struggling against one's selfish selfish desires. It is struggling against the satans among humans and the jinn in order to save one's heart, to save one's heart and soul from sins and base morals that lead to eternal destruction. One who does not work on his heart, on the soundness of his heart. One who does not work on his morals, on his character. One who does not work on controlling his selfish desires. One who does not work on saying no to his compulsive evil commanding soul. Is not engaged in jihad. He's, he might be actually pursuing his selfish desires. Maybe he is after adrenaline. This is important. This is the definition of jihad. This is the definition of the struggle that we need to go through on this earth. Ve o iki vazife ise birisi hayatı verip beslemektir. Diğeri hayatı verene ve besleyene perestiş edip yalvarmaktır. Ona tevekkül edip emniyet etmektir. As for those two responsibilities, one is giving life and sustaining it. Remember, there were two responsibilities. One belonged to the king, the other belonged to the soldier, the slave. As for those two responsibilities, one is giving life and sustaining it. And this includes everything, anything and everything that pertains, that relates to sustaining life. And the other is 
worshipping worshiping the giver of life and besieging him, or putting your trust in him and relying on him. He, the one who has given life and who sustains it, who treats us when we are sick, who gives us provisions, who will take our lives, who gave us life and who will take our, our lives, he guaranteed, he guaranteed sustenance, he guaranteed provision. And our job is worshipping the giver of life and beseeching him or putting our trust in him and relying on him. Evet, en parlak bir mucize-i sanat-ı samedaniye ve harika-i hikmet-i rabbaniye olan hayatı kim vermiş, yapmış ise rızıkla o, o hayatı besleyen ve idame eden de odur. Ondan başka olamaz. Yes, whoever has created and given life which is a most lustrous miracle of the eternally besought one's art. Al-Samet. Al-Samet is the word we are using here. Eternally besought one's art and wonder of divine wisdom. This is life. Life is a miracle. It cannot be from anywhere, anywhere, but from Al-Samet. The one who is in need of nothing and everything is in need of. All the needs that are associated with our existence relate to our life. And we are all in need of him for all of our needs. He provides and sustains it, life. Whoever has created and given life, he provides and sustains it. It cannot be anyone else. The one who gave it is the only one who can provide and sustain it. Not us. Not the seeming owner of life. Not the one to whose existence life is attached. He cannot or she cannot provide and sustain love, life. He can. The one who gave it can. Delil mi istersin? Do you want proof? En zayıf, en aptal hayvan, en iyi beslenir. Meyve kurtları ve balıklar gibi. En aciz, en nazik mahluk, en iyi rızkı o yer. Çocuklar ve yavrular gibi. Do you want proof? The weakest and least intelligent animals are fed in the best way, such as fruit worms and the fish. Fruit worms, they live in their fruit. What do they need in order to procure their needs? Open their mouths and chew. But they have so little intelligence, so little capacity. If you take them out of the fruit, they don't have the way of going back to the fruit. They will just die. And because they are so powerless, because they are so incapable, the one who sustains everything with his mercy provides them in the easiest way. I had seen a video about this. Kangaroos, when they are born, they are born really tiny. What is born is a little creature the size of maybe a finger who has nothing but two hands or let's say front legs and a nose and a mouth that's capable of suckling attaching latching on uh, his mother's nipple and suckling and that's all all this creature needs at that time he comes out of his mother's womb and climbs with those two front legs that it has uh, holding on to the fur of his mother and then goes into the pocket that's prepared for it the sack that's prepared for it for it and then milk is provided there he latches and he stays there such a powerless creature if you see it but that such a powerless creature is actually provided with everything it needs. That's how it is. The most powerless and delicate creations eat the best provisions, such as infants and baby animals. What do they eat? They, they drink pure milk, pure nutrition, full of vitamins and minerals and nutrition and whatever the baby needs. And also it is 
modified according to the age of the baby too. The milk that a mother produces when the baby is first born is different from the milk that the mother produces when the baby is a year old. So do you want proof that it is he, the giver of life, who sustains it? Look, those who cannot make any effort for their own sustenance are sustained in the best and easiest way. Evet, vasıtayı rızkı helal, iktidar ve ihtiyar ile olmadığını, belki aczu zaaf ile olduğunu anlamak için balıklar ile tilkileri, yavrular ile canavarları, ağaçlar ile hayvanları muvazene etmek kafidir. This is such an important reality that is being um, revealed here. If we were to realize this, we would probably join the ranks of Siddiqin, the truthful ones. Yes, to understand that halal sustenance, that is, sustenance that God has explicitly permitted us, told us that we can consume. To understand halal sustenance is obtained not through power and choice, not through power and capacities of the self, not through physical power and willpower. Halal sustenance is obtained not through power and choice, but certainly, certainly through impotence and weakness. That may sound like a paradox, right? Sustenance is provided through impotence and weakness. But we just saw the example of the babies and the fish and the fruit worms. It suffices to compare the fish with foxes. <clears throat> Who has more power? Who is more intelligent? Who has more willpower and cunning? It suffices to compare the fish with foxes. Who eats better? Babies with wild beasts. And trees with animals. Do trees run after their food? Food comes to them. Let me repeat this. Yes, to understand that halal sustenance is obtained not through power and capacity of the self, not with power, but maybe through impotence and weakness. It suffices to compare the fish with foxes, babies with wild beasts, and trees with animals. Demek derdi maişet için namazını terk eden o nefere benzer ki, talimi ve siperini bırakıp çarşıda dilencilik eder. Then, one who leaves the prescribed prayers for the necessities of sustenance. And this is something that we should really, really be real about. One who leaves or delays the prescribed prayers for the necessities of sustenance. Or one who prays but does not put his attention, his focus in the prayer. His mind is still somewhere else. One who leaves the prescribed prayers for the necessities of sustenance. Who finds excuses in the necessities of sustenance. For not praying or delaying the prayer or doing it in a you know, really quick way. This person resembles a soldier who leaves his training and the trenches to go to the bazaar and beg. Who is the provider? Who is the provider? Fakat namazını kıldıktan sonra Cenab-ı Rezzak-ı Kerim'in matbaha-i rahmetinden tayinatını, tayinatını aramak Başkalara bağır olmamak için bizzat gitmek güzeldir. Mertliktir. O da bir ibadettir. But going, and going to the bazaar, after performing the prescribed prayers, to look for one's ration from the generous provider's kitchen of mercy. So 
generous provider al kareem al razak his kitchen of mercy is beautiful and manly it is a kind of worship too but the condition after performing the five daily prayers not instead of performing the five daily prayers if it is after performing the five daily prayers it is a form of worship too why what is worship worship is glorifying the lord obeying his command declaring his lordship so how can one worship the lord who commands him to perform the five daily prayers how can one worship this lord by not performing the five daily prayers if we are not obeying his command how can we claim to be worshiping him but after we perform the five daily prayers it's also his command it is his custom it is the way he has created us it is the way he has set things up that we go and look for our provision and that is beautiful that is a form of worship if we do it with the right intention if we do it with the intention to follow God's creation it is manly hem insan ibadet için halk olunduğunu fıtratı ve cihazatı maneviyesi gösteriyor moreover the character and metaphysical qualities spiritual qualities of humans show that they are created to worship God zira hayatı dünyeviyesine lazım olan amel ve iktidar cihetinde en edna bir serçe kuşuna yetişemez because considering the achievements and capacities needed for their worldly lives they cannot reach even the rank of a most simple sparrow a sparrow is born in the egg where it is provided it comes out of the egg it takes it say a week two weeks three weeks however long it takes and then the sparrow flies and it has everything it needs it has a beak it has the feathers it has the wings it has the knowledge where is that knowledge coming from it has the knowledge of where to look for its food and what to eat and what not to eat take a human being a baby feed the baby take all, all of its needs his needs or her needs for a year let the baby start to walk and let the baby into the forest what will happen it takes us more than 20 years to be able to stand on, on our on our feet if we can ever do that considering the achievements and capacities needed for their worldly lives human beings cannot even reach the rank of a most simple sparrow the sparrow needs nothing but its body to survive we need clothing we need housing we need company we need tools Fakat hayat maneviye ve uhreviyesine lazım olan ilim ve iftikar ve tazarru ve ibadet cihetinde hayvanatın sultanı ve kumandanı hükmündedir. So this is not where our advantages are, where, where our um, contributions are. This is not where we are in our prime, like the providing our worldly needs. That's not where, uh, where we are in our prime. But considering they are the human beings, knowledge, exposition of neediness before God, and humble invocation and worship of God, each needed for their spiritual, spirituality and lives in the hereafter, they, humans, appear to be the kings and commanders of animals. Is there any animal out there that can worship God better than a true believer, true human being? true believing submitting human being when a, an animal says 
Alhamdulillah, in its own way. When an animal is grateful, it is grateful for the moment and for the thing that is giving it pleasure, that is providing, procuring its needs. That, that's, that, that's it. When a donkey is grateful, it is grateful for the lettuce that it is eating. When a human being is grateful, it is grateful for the entire creation. His imagination and intellect helps him understand that its existence depends on the existence of the entire cosmos. When a hum human being is grateful, he or she is grateful for what he has been blessed by before and what he is expecting to be blessed in the future. When a human being is grateful, he is grateful just, just for God's countenance. Just for being created. Animals have practical intellect. But humans have practical intellect and also metaphysical intellect. Theoretical intellect. And our gratitude, our worship is expanded infinitely with that theoretical, with that metaphysical intellect. When we present our gratitude to God, we can present our gratitude in the name of the entire creation. When we worship God, we worship Him as the Lord of the Alameen, as the Lord of the worlds, uh, as the Lord of the realms. Not, not just as our Lord. That's why we say, After we say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Thanks and praise be to the Lord of the universes, the Lord of the realms. And then we say, We worship you alone. This is human beings. This is where we are at our prime. Considering their knowledge, exposition of neediness before God, humble invocation and worship of God, each needed for our spirituality and lives in the hereafter, they, human beings, we, appear to be the kings and commanders of animals. Demek ey nefsim, eğer hayatı dünyeviyeyi gayeyi maksad yapsan ve ona daim çalışsan, en azından bir serçe kuşunun bir neferi hükmünde olursun. Oh, in that case, oh my soul, if you aim for the life of this world, if you go to the bazaar and beg and not fulfill your duties where you, in, in the, in the uh, base, where you are stationed. If you aim for the life of this world and work incessantly for it, you can at most be an ordinary sparrow. Or lower than that. That's the highest rank you can attain and actually you will descend to as well If this continues, if you don't come to your senses, you will descend to as well to the lowest of the law. Eğer hayatı uhreviyeyi gayeyi maksad yapsan ve şu hayatı dahi ona vesile ve mezra etsen ve ona göre çalışsan o vakit hayvanatın büyük bir kumandanın hükmünde ve şu dünyada Cenab-ı Hakk'ın nazlı ve niyazlar bir abdi mükerrem ve muhterem bir misafiri olursun. If you aim for the life of the hereafter and turn this life into its means and plow land then you become an exalted commander of animals, a coddled and supplicant servant of the supreme reality, Janab Haq, Almighty God, and his respected and honorable guest here in this world. And then, because you fulfill your responsibilities in this world, because you behave like a, a guest with good morals, good etiquette, then you are invited to an even better place where you are hosted as a guest permanently to eternity. İşte sana iki yol. İstediğini intihab edebilirsin. Hidayet ve tevfiki Erhamur Rahiminden iste. Here are two paths for you. You can pick whichever you want. Ask for guidance and success from the most merciful of the merciful ones. Arhamur Rahimin. Maybe to sum up, 
performing the daily prayers or by expansion from that worshiping God performing what we are commanded to do fulfilling our obligations as a slave of God and avoiding sins this is a succinct definition of Urbodiyya slavehood before God this is a succinct definition of the state position that we need to be taking before our Lord however we are in the world the world is a material place and it seems that we need material needs here seemingly we may feel that it is our responsibility to go after the world and procure those needs but that is a delusion that is a mistake a misperception because the Lord the one who created us promises and the Quran promises that he is the provider and he will provide therefore our focus needs to be on what we are sent here for and we are sent here to worship our Lord to become his truthful obedient devout servants and slaves does this mean that then we should just sit somewhere and worship the whole day and not take care of of uh, our businesses and try to earn our lives and so on and so forth no that is not the conclusion we get from this the conclusion we take from this is that we focus on our worship we focus on being truthful slaves of our Lord we perform the prayers we do what he has ordained us to do and then and we avoid what he has forbid, forbidden us from doing and then we go out and look for our provision because that is his command too so we don't look for our provision for the sake of the provision we look for our provision because because we are his slaves and he told us to do so however if we don't perform the prayers if we don't avoid major sins if we don't worship God if we don't do ibadah in a sense and then we go out seeking our provision and we claim to be seeking our provision because that's our responsibility too and we have children and we are taking care of our children and so on and so forth sustaining life is a duty no that's not how it works we cannot obey God by disobeying God that's simple very simple we cannot obey God by disobeying God we have priorities and we also need to have a certainty that God does not lie God is capable of what he has promised and he has promised that he is going to provide for us if we understand this realize this truly then it becomes easier for us to to um, perform what we need to perform and then look for our sustenance otherwise the world is very destructive the world is very attractive if we do not protect ourselves by heeding God's commands the world will lead us to heedlessness and destruction we need to have priorities we need to have a focus and where the focus needs to be is explained in the fifth word as we read it سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا إنك أنت العليم الحكيم وآخر الدواهم أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الفاتحة